Hi, my name is Carlina, and this is an advanced power flow for Thunderbolt Power Yoga. This flow will get you into albatross and have you hold it, Titi Basana, wheel, and will generally feature a bunch of fun, challenging transitions. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, let's get started in child's pose today. Let's get started in child's pose. As if this is the first child's pose you've ever done, start to let the experience seep in. And each moment, each incremental breath that you take in, see if you can just be in that moment and as it crests, then let it fall away. So often we get caught up with possessing trying to hold on to a thing or build up our stores of resources that are based in the physical world when by its very nature the physical world is a fleeting thing. Man-made structures crumble due to our bodies. We live a short life cycle and then we're done. So relationships fall away, even the ones that are lasting, physically speaking anyways, of course. But it's easy to cling. It's easy to cling into and onto the physical aspect of things. So see if you can let that go and just experience. Experiences non-possessive and experiences not based in physicality, but rather the intuitive senses that process the information you take in. Your biggest tool, of course, is your body. So press your feet down into the ground more and feel the earth underneath you. And take a slow, big inhale, expand your lungs, feel that expansion. Open your mouth, sigh out. Now ujjayi. Breathe in and out through your nose. With all the little hairs in your nostrils, more tools for feeling your air in and out. Begin a four-part breath if you haven't already gotten there. Inhale, hold it in. The holding is one part. Through your nose, breathe out. Hold it out. That is also one part. Inhale, hold. Exhale, hold. Four parts. Breathe in, rise to all fours, tabletop position. Settle in on your exhale, spread your fingers wide, get into experience. And tilt your pelvis forward and backward until you feel yourself naturally flow into your cats and your cows. On your inhale, your back bend, and on your exhale, empty out and flex your spine. A little jargon for you. Back bend, extension of your spine. Curling in, flexion of your spine. Breathe in and hold it. Breathe out. Hold it out. Let the experience of holding also resonate within you. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. You can free yourself here to move about any way that allows you more sensation. Move in any way that allows you to take in these poses that we so often do in a way that feels raw and new.
Land in the middle of your downward facing dog. Rise to your toes. Look forward. Make your way up. Ragdoll forward. Fold at the top of your mat. Bend your knees. Spinal flexion, which is to say you're rounding in and gazing in at your own navel. This creates length in your spine, but it is not isolated in your spine. Bend your knees so you can tilt your pelvis more forward. Yes, very nice, Beth. That pelvic tilt, which makes the distance that your spine must go to be straighter, sh shorter, a shorter distance from the tip of your pelvis, your booty, all the way down through the crown of your head. Breathe into that length. Breathe out, hollow out your belly more. Hold your air out. Rock more weight forward into the ball of your foot with your air out. Then breathe in again. Try to hold that position a little more forward. Exhale. Rise to stand slowly. Unfurl one vertebra at a time. Lift your arms up. Inhale. Breathe out, pull your hands into heart center. Close your eyes. Feel the sensation from all four corners of your feet. You have the perimeter of your toes grip the ground. Course energy up through the center of your thighs, your legs, through your inner thighs and into your torso. Radiate through your throat, through your mind and out the top of your head. Breathe in. Open up your mouth, sigh out. Inhale for Om. Om. Together, get rooted through your feet. Lift your arms up. Inhale. Exhale, fold over your legs. Flat back, breathe in. Keep your knees bent. And think about tilting your pelvis here. Bring your hands up to about mid-shin. Broaden your chest so that your upper spine is nice and straight. And breathe out. Increase the indent at your hip crease. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, draw a little more weight into the ball of your foot. Exhale, knit in your low belly, plant your hands, plank pose. Go inside and listen to yourself in your plank. Go deep enough inside that your plank is your neighbor's plank and together you're planking as one. Look forward. Off the precipice of your mat, breathe in. Hug your inner thighs in together more. Breathe in. Hug your outer hip muscles into bone. Inhale, shift a little forward. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Untuck your toes for cobra. Lift up Bhujangasana. Beautiful. Lift through your heart. Inhale, length through your neck. Exhale, press your hip bones down more. Lift your abdomen away from the ground a little bit. With length, breathe in. Exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes. Breathe in, brace your abdomen. Hold it in. Plank pose, press up. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Fill. Empty. Go inside, experience. Experience what it's like to put more space between your toes, yogi toes. Press more intentionally into the perimeter of your hand, the triad of your hand, spread your fingers wider, inhale. Hug your outer triceps in to your bones more. That's your outer arms. Put a little cat in your upper back, inhale, feel that space up. Exhale, bend your knees, hike up onto your toes. Look forward. Step or hop to the top of your mat, forward fold. Flat back, inhale, keep that bend in your knees, focus on your pelvic tilt. Fold forward over your legs. 
Rise to stand, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hand pose. Press your palms together. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Half lift, look forward. Plant your hands, step back to plank. And feel the divot between your shoulder blades spread apart. Breathe in. Look forward. Rock more weight forward. Chaturanga. Hold it at the depth of your chaturanga. Broaden across your collarbones more. Squeeze your inner thighs into each other more. Look forward. Inhale to upward facing dog. Stay there. Look at the top of your chest. Good. Use your low abs, lift your hips up an inch, broaden your chest more, lift your gaze up, inhale. Downward facing dog, roll over your toes to hike your hips. Skin to muscle to bone, external to deeper incrementally. Use the tool of your body to sense deeper inward as if it was the first time you ever experienced a thing. Rise onto your toes. Look forward and crouch. Hold it. Look forward, breathe in. Now hop your hips over your shoulders. Forward fold. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, fold over your legs. Urdhva Hasta, inhale up, exhale, fold it right back, Uttanasana, curl in. Half lift, look forward. Chaturanga, see if you can find that good position you just had. Roll into upward facing dog, breathe in. Breathe out downward facing dog from your hip crease. Look forward, get springy, be intentional, hop your hips forward over your shoulders. Forward fold, exhale. Sit into chair pose, sit your hips back, lift your arms up. No part of this pose is passive, including your feet. See if you can feel something that you've never felt before. If you need a place to start with that, start in your feet. Do you feel the spaces between your toes working? Do you feel equal pressure left to right, right to left? What about where your feet marry together? Are you pressing that there or are they just passively hanging out like neighbors? Breathe in. Exhale, fold over your legs. Flat back with a bend in your knees. Use your toes to lift your hips a little higher up over your shoulders. Plant your hands. Breathe in, look forward in front of your fingertips. Hop up with your hips over your shoulders. Land back in Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, breathe out. In your down dog, find your skin to muscle to bone activity. Find your inner thighs and hug them in tighter to the bones of your femurs. Look forward, step your right foot forward, warrior one. Rise to stand. Keep the beautiful shape underneath you. Lift up your left inner thigh to create internal rotation. Take the meat of your left inner thigh from a diagonal and spin it toward the back of the room a little more. Let your outer hip muscles help you plug that into place. Squeeze in, breathe in. Humble warrior, dive your chest to the inside of your right thigh. And feel your ribs and your right thigh connecting. If they're not connected there, zip it up. Look at your back foot. Good. See the arch of your back foot lift up. If it's not lifting, you can scoot your foot closer to the front of your mat or spread your toes wider, see what happens. Breathe in, lengthen your spine. Breathe out, re-square your hips. Shift your right hip crease back and your left hip forward. Warrior one, inhale, rise up. 
Exhale, frame your right foot, step it back, chaturanga with your right leg lifted, keep it up. Into upward facing dog, breathe in, downward facing dog, breathe out. Left side, warrior one, step forward, rise to stand, inhale up, and take this opportunity to square up your legs, a firm foundation. Lift your right inner thigh up, this is where that Lift creates the space where your body's going to go in a second. All right, experience what it's like to work really hard and find new places to go deeper. Breathe in. Humble, breathe out. Shift your gaze at your back foot. It's very telling. Where are your back toes pointed? Are they pointing straight over to the right? Can you turn them more to the front. Ultimately, they're going to be more at 1 or 2 o'clock. Good flow of breath. Find that four-part breath. Inhale, hold. Exhale, hold. Warrior one, inhale, rise up. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. With your left leg, keep it lifted. Flow into upward facing, and then back into downward facing dog. Cheat your toes up about two or three inches towards your hands. Rise onto your toes, crouch, hold it, exhale. Exhale, double exhale, and hold your air out. Keep your hips high. Stay for another round of breath in. Hold it. Out. Hold it. In, hold it, hop your hips over your shoulders, go. Land in your forward fold, good cat. Chair pose, breathe in. Crack open your heart, cactus your arms. Push your chest more forward. See if you can keep the integrity of your lumbar spine, so instead of getting super deep there, it's just a continuation of your chest opening, your heart opening, your heart opening, breathe in, lift your elbows in line with your shoulders, exhale, fold over your legs, half lift, breathe in, bend your knees, hike onto your toes, float back to Chaturanga Dandasana, upward facing, inhale, that was very nice, Brooke, back to downward facing dog, right side warrior one, inhale up, Ride your exhale into humble warrior. Breathe in, lift up, spin into warrior two, exhale. Now this is the point of class where you turn your ears on for sure, because it seems deceptively like we're gonna do the standard TPY flow, but that's not the case. Keep pulling your shoulders in toward each other. Plug it in with the use of your triceps more. Sit deeper into your right leg. Keep that depth peaceful. Tip it back on your inhale. And cartwheel down. Put your right arm under your right leg. Plant your right hand outside of your right foot. Pivot onto the ball of your left toes. Hold this position. Look forward. Start to scoot your right foot forward, forward, forward. Pivot your right inner thigh down onto your right arm, chaturanga your elbows. Hold without taking off into albatross. Straighten your right leg as much as you can, then lean forward and fly into albatross. So you want to hold it static first, Tori. Bend your elbows more, then you got it. Yeah, work on getting the length of your hamstrings before floating into momentum. Then back to Chaturanga if you can. Upward facing dog is your breath in. Downward facing breathe out. I see a lot of people who use momentum that are having a little more difficult time doing it that way. Isn't it interesting? It's good though. You're going to get that isolation and stretch your hamstrings today. Breathe in. Breathe out. Step your left foot forward, warrior one. Rise up. Breathe in. Ride it into humble warrior. Exhale. 
Inhale, up, warrior one. Exhale, open, warrior two. Make sure your alignment is on point, all right? So cat, take your left heel in line with your right arch more. Even more, and there. Lift your chest up, out of your hips. Breathe in, but keep your abs on. Lift your sternum up. Challenge the depth in your left thigh. Keep your right inner thigh active. Inhale into Peaceful Warrior. Exhale, cartwheel down and set up for your albatross. Hold it static. Hold it static. Give yourself time to feel something new. Squeeze your left side booty more, Lori. Ah, new length. Then lean forward and fly. A little bit of momentum to pop back. Exhale, chaturanga. Breathe in for upward facing dog. Breathe out, downward facing dog. Cheat your toes up toward your hand. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Crouch your hips high. Hold out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. Hold. Hop. Land on your exhale. Half lift, breathe in. Fold over your legs. Chair pose, sit it low. Cactus your arms, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Half lift, breathe in. On your exhale, chaturanga, hop it back or float through your handstand. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Right side, warrior one, step forward, inhale up. Exhale, humble warrior. Warrior one, lift. Exhale, spin to warrior two. Peaceful, tip it back. Straighten your right leg, radiant triangle. Feel your ribs connect into your outer hip. Feel your back shoulder connect into your spine. Cycle your breath in, hold it in. Exhale, hold it out. Breathe in, lift up, and rock forward into triangle pose. Exhale, hold out, rock your hips more toward the wall behind you. Is there a big crease in your right side waist? Put your right hand somewhere where there's not that crease. Connect so that you're growing out of your right hip Push your right hip more forward toward the, L, uh, toward the left side of your mat. Expand your ribs. Inhale, hold it in. Feel the stretch. Feel something new. You go deeper inside. Exhale. Bend your right knee. Side angle. Sweep your left arm forward to the front of the house. Put 30 more pounds of pressure in your left big toe. Lift your left inner thigh up two inches. Good. Notice the extra straightness out of your right hip. Breathe in. Feel something new. Exhale, integrate your right shoulder blade into your spine more. With your whole body connected, lean your left side back. Inhale. Exhale to warrior two, stand it up. Tip back, peaceful warrior, breathe in. Same type of albatross, cartwheel down, take it from static, work to integrate your booty and leg together more, then lean your weight forward and lift your back leg off of the ground. Exhale to chaturanga, breathe in to upward facing, exhale, downward facing dog. Left side, warrior one, root to rise. Humble warrior, shift your gaze backward. Lift up, spin open, warrior two. As if it was the first time experience, let everything in the past go. Peaceful, inhale. Straighten for radiant triangle. Straighten your left leg. 
And notice the tilt of your hips. Use your breath in your core. Rock your hips back toward the wall behind you now. Triangle pose. Find the flow of your breath, that four-part breath. Expand your right side ribs so much that you feel the connection where your hips and your torso meet through your obliques. Energize your right inner thigh more and keep your breath, four parts, in and hold. Out and hold. That's good. Integrate your shoulders on your spine, then lean your whole torso as if there's a wall behind you to lean into. So let it lean back, your head and neck too. Breathe in deeper to your right side. Breathe out, side angle, bend your left leg. Cut your right arm forward to the front. Imagine that you're pushing down with your right palm. Let that push down, lift your right inner thigh up. And take your bottom hip from behind you. Make enough space with your bottom arm that you can shift your hips underneath you. Then you get the stretch in your right side hip, your outer right hip. Breathe in, firm up your core, exhale, lift up, warrior two, peaceful warrior, inhale back, exhale, keep the space underneath your legs, set it up for your albatross, Ekapada Kundinyasana. Before you take off with momentum, get your left leg as straight as it will possibly go. Fire up your right leg, lean forward. Exhale, pop it back. Don't kick your neighbor in the face. <laughs> Upward facing dog. Back to downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, warrior one. Inhale, rise up. Humble warrior, lean it forward. Inhale, warrior one, lift back up into warrior two, immediately spin. Peaceful inhale. Radiant, straighten your right leg. Trikonasana forward into triangle. Make sure you rock your hips with space underneath you. Breathe in. Side angle, breathe out. Length through your left side on your inhale. Use your core warrior to lift it back up. Now this is where we're going different. Peaceful warrior, tip back. Exhale, set up like you're going to do albatross and don't go anywhere. Pivot your back foot up to make enough space. Shift your right leg up over your right shoulder as much as you can, then drop your back foot back down like warrior two. Put weight in your right foot. Put weight in your left foot. Hmm, let me say that again. Put weight in your right hand. Put weight in your left foot. Lift your right foot up. Grab your right foot. With your left hand, press harder through your back foot, right hand, spin into Vishvamitrasana. Kick. Keep the marriage between your right ribs and your right thigh. Let the kicking of your right foot into your left hand stretch your left side out more. Having trouble with stability, drop your back knee down, kickstand your left foot behind you toward the right side of your mat. Then try it again. You've got time, I'm not rushing you out of this. Holding this shape, much, much like your albatross pose, integrate your right booty and right thigh. And once you start to get that kick, lean your body back like triangle or like side angle. Push your right hip forward toward the left side of your mat more. That's nice, Lynn. All right. Exit through albatross. It's hard now, and it will get easier. And as it gets easier, you will get the benefits of the hard work that you put in. This is what it takes to do handstands. This is what it takes to experience new parts of your body, new old parts. Left side, warrior one. Inhale up. Humble warrior, dive it forward. 
Warrior two into warrior one into warrior two. Straight into peace, breathe in. Straighten your left leg, radiant. Trikonasana, rock forward. Stack your right side over your left side for a breath. Inhale. Exhale into side angle, bend your left knee. Make the space to rock your left hip underneath you, breathe in. Exhale, lift up, warrior two. Peaceful warrior, tip it back. Exhale, cartwheel into your setup. Plant your left arm underneath you, your left hand outside of your left foot. Mm. Make space by pivoting onto your back foot first. Put your back stra backpack strap of a leg on over your left shoulder. Then plant your right foot back into warrior two position or drop your right knee down and kickstand out underneath you. We've got really great examples out in the front if you need a visual. Grab your left foot with your right hand and kick. Put more weight in whatever right side body part is down and your left hand. I'm gonna give you another breath or two. Keep your back thigh lifted, lift it up more. Push your hips to the right side of your mat more. Breathe in. Reground both hands down, Ekapada Kundinyasana. Beautiful transition, Lori. Albatross into Chaturanga. Upward facing into downward facing. Step your feet together at the back of your mat. Lift your right leg up and back. Bend your knee. Stack your hips. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Flip your dog. Let your left fingers spin. All right, keep letting them spin. And let your shoulder also spin more open. Rock your chest more forward. Knit your abs in and on. Breathe in. Spin back around. Roll forward to plank pose. Plank pose. Plant your right hand underneath your shoulder. Side plank, Vashisthasana. Everybody go ahead and take a tree variation with your left leg planted in your right thigh. Mm. Heel toe, your right foot a tiny bit closer to your hand. Stretch the bottom of your foot flat to the ground. Now, once you get stacked, peel open like a back bend. Maybe even cactus your lifted arm. Lean your head back. Good, Tori. Lift up higher in your bottom hip. Breathe in. Downward facing dog, spin it back around. Good, let's do that together. Cleansing breath, breathe in. Open your mouth, sigh. Step your feet together if they're not already there. Lift your left leg up and back. Bend your knee and stack open. Hang out and breathe. Breathe into something new. Breathe into deeper experience. I like Stephanie's got her eyes closed up there. Maybe it's just because her sweat's in her eyes. But that's good. Use your proprioception. Breathe in. Lift up higher. Flip your dog. Exhale. Spin out of your right armpit. Rock your chest more forward to the front of your mat. Turn your left palm down and open to the right more. Let your head open to the right. Breathe in. Shift forward. Exhale. Rock back over. Flow forward into plank. Plank pose. Inhale. Side plank. Plant your left hand down. Stack your right side body up and over. Take your tree variation. Make sure that the space between your left hand and left foot is a little shorter than normal. Everyone looks fantastic. Feel the connection shoulder blade to shoulder blade. That's what allows you to rotate out of your left armpit. Rotate open. Cactus your right arm. Cactus your right arm, push your hips more forward. Good, Eric. Breathe in, lean your head back. Put both hands down to the ground. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. 
Cheat your stance ever so slightly. Look forward and give yourself a couple of hops for joy. Try to get those ho your hips over your shoulders. Do the same thing as before. Let's run through it together one time. Exhale, crouch, hold out. Inhale, look forward, hold in, then you hop. Look forward is key, look forward is key. Like six inches out in front of you. Inhale, hold, hop with your gaze forward. Yes. Inhale, hop with your gaze forward, Lynn, with your gaze forward. Give me one more. Squeeze in. Press harder. Breathe in. Malasana, if you're not already there, take your feet wide. Now today, we're going to do this a little different. Lift your booty up. We did this last week, similar, right? And take your squat into Bird of Paradise. Lift your butt up, inhale, exhale, drop your left arm underneath your left thigh, internally rotate your left arm, meet your hands together behind your back. Look down, shift weight into your right foot, twist open to the right first, stack open. Press down through your right foot, lift it up, get to the place where your left side butt and leg are so connected that it's straight. It doesn't have to be straight up and down. The up and downness will come. Your right leg has to be straight. And your left leg can be straight and pointed out to the side. Again, the up and downness will come. Lift your chest up, though. That'll help. Breathe in. Back to your squat. Breathe out. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, sit your booty back. Breathe in. Exhale, thread your right arm underneath your right leg. Internally rotate. Turn your thumb backward toward the back of your mat. Get a nice even grip. Index finger to index finger, middle finger to middle finger, pinky to pinky. Stand it up. Put your weight into your left foot. Draw the top of your right thigh in toward your right ribs actively. Do it actively. For exactly so, Rebecca. If you can't get straight up and down, just get straight lines, straight lines. Malasana yogi squat. Keep your legs wide. Dump your head down to the ground, lift your hips up. Thread your arms straight toward the back of your mat in between your legs. Bend your knees. Put your backpack straps on over your shoulders. Turn your fingertips forward to the front. Bend your elbows and sit down. Now, before lifting off, crawl your legs forward. You're going to hold a grounded firefly. Keep scooting your legs forward. Drop your chest down more. Bend your elbows and drop your chest down. I'll do it up here while you're, you're fiddling around with it, right? So I could take off from here, but I'm not going to get as far. I could take off with my uh, legs not super long. What I like to do is I like to drop my chest down, crawl my legs out as straight as they will go, squeeze my butt, and then lift it all up in one piece. That way I'm already super integrated. So why don't you try it like that? It's more static less momentum, more integration, stronger body, stronger willpower. Drop your chest down more, Brooke. Cat, you too, drop your chest down like chaturanga. Okay, give it another try. From Malasana. Spread your fingers wide. If your toes are pointing out in opposite directions, as you scoot your toes more forward, walk them in a little bit toward each other. So Brooke, that would be you in that camp. Yes. Use your inner thighs to hug in. Good, Tori. Good, Tori. Good. Good, Peggy. When you're done, human resting pose. 
Anybody know what that is? Malasana, yogi squat. Lift your butt up to the line of your knees. Put your hands onto your knees like cups. Drop your left elbow, left shoulder down. Peek over your right shoulder. Mm-hmm. Lean into it. Breathe in. Ring it out the other direction. Use your left hand to push your left inner thigh more open. Breathe in. Take it back to center, forward fold. Heel toe your feet together, crow pose. Those of you with a strong core, I want, or a strong crow, I want you to practice crane, and I want you to practice crane with your arms fully straight and your gaze toward your toes. So that looks like starting with bent elbows, tucking in tight. Before you lift your feet off the ground, get your arms straight, and then look back. Notice the big spinal flexion here looks different than it does with my gaze forward. Give it a try. A lot of fun. Your arms have to be straight, though, in order for that to work. If that's not happening, holding a very steady, strong crow pose for a long time will get you there. Let's see just how long you can hold your crow. Everybody come down. Let's see if the timer function works on here. Here we go. Ready. Set. One minute. Get yourself planted. Crow. One minute. Keep your breath moving. Keep your breath moving slowly. If you're holding it, don't change a thing. The hardest part is steadiness of your mind. New depth can mean longer, static. New sensation, can you go deeper? If you're more than halfway there, don't change a thing, just keep breathing. Oxygenate your muscles so they can keep working for you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Forward fold. Shake your wrists out. Split your feet about hip width distance. And take Pada Hastasana with your palms down and fingertips pointing back toward your heels. Bend your knees and let the emphasis be on opening your wrists again. And drop your chest even further toward your thighs. Bend your knees more. And turn your gaze in more. And breathe into the length in your spine. Release your hands from underneath your feet. Half lift. Heel toe your feet together. Fold, exhale over your legs. Chair pose, sit low, lift your arms up. Breathe in, twist to the right, breathe out. Use your right hand on the outside of your right thigh, push against your right thigh with your right hand. Exhale deeper, slide your left arm further to the right further to the right. Squeeze your legs in together tighter. Use the pressure of your hand to resist. Slide your left ribs to the outside of your right leg. 
And once you feel like you can push your right tricep into that space, that's where you stay. And stay and lean your left shoulder back in line with your left hip crease. Breathe in and breathe out. Chair pose, inhale. Take the same jam over to the left side. One side may be more accessible than the other. And use your left hand. Pin your left thigh into place with your left hand. Exhale, slide your right ribs further to the left. Slide your right armpit down toward the ground more. To the left more and down. And get that knitted belly to thighness. Every twist is secretly a forward fold. Breathe in. Fold over your legs, breathe out. Half lift, inhale. Plant your hands down, hop it back through a handstand or Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Three-legged dog, lift your right leg up. Exhale, pull your knee into your nose, cheetah pose. Three-legged dog, lift up. Exhale, touch your knee to your right elbow. Hold it there. Look forward. Chaturanga your elbows, slide your chest forward, lift your left leg up. Ah, one-legged crow, one-legged crow. All right, one-legged crow. Yeah, that's a lot harder than Ekapada Kundinyasana. So one more time, this is what it looks like. Lift your right leg up, pull your knee into your elbow, just chaturanga your elbows down, lift your left leg up. Give it a try. Three-legged dog on the right side. I'll give you two cracks on the left side when we get there. Pull your right knee into your right elbow. Kick your heel into your booty. Keep your, think kneecap to back of leg here. Lean forward, look forward, lift your left leg up. And come on down. Now before I'm gonna let you try the left side, before we move on to anything else, take your left hand to the back of your right elbow. Bend your thumb into your shoulder. Slide your index finger east and west. Do you feel that there I there's a bone? And then there's another bone. Now go north and south. There's a divot between the bones. Go back, three-legged dog. Put your kneecap in that divot. Three-legged dog. Put your kneecap in that divot. He Pull your heel into your butt more, breathe in, pull your knee into your nose, crescent lunge, step forward. Inhale, lift up. Cactus your arms. Lift higher onto the ball of your back foot. And keep that pivot action going in your back leg. Drive your left hip more forward Externally rotate the thigh muscle of your right leg to square. Square your hips. Pull your shoulders in together. Lean your whole upper back back and up. So imagine that somebody is coming behind you and pushing the center of your heart up to the ceiling. Fold over that imaginary assist. And with your elbows up in line with your shoulders. Crack your heart open more and open more. The more you push your hips forward, the more your upper back will go back, back bends. You can look back at the wall behind you. You can take it deep, as deep as feels good in your body. Neutralize, inhale. Gangster lean forward over your right leg. Float your arms whatever way makes your torso work. Just your arms. Just gangster lean, good. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, twist to the right. And 
Keep the integrity of your left inner thigh, the lift of your left inner thigh. Good, Eric. Lean as if there's a wall behind your left leg. Lean in. Breathe in. Lean your left shoulder back too. Slowly lift up. Pivot into Prasarita Padatanasana. Toe, turn your toes in and your heels out. Turn your toes in and your heels out. Take your hands like you're sliding them into pockets behind you. Push your hips forward. Lean your upper body back. Breathe in. Exhale, fold, fold forward between your legs. For my first wide-legged forward fold, I personally like to do something that is balanced side to side. So I don't like to twist it so much. I like to fold and grab my feet or ca crawl my arms through my legs or do a headstand. And you can do any of those things. You can do anything here as long as you're accessing the tilt of your pelvis. Bend your knees and tilt your pelvis. In this pose, your torso eventually goes through your legs. Make sure your shoulders are away from your ears. Make your neck nice and long. No folds in the back of your neck. Breathe in. And come on slowly back down to earth. Lift up halfway, firm up your abs and your pelvic floor. Inhale, stand the rest of the way up. Good, exhale, pivot to the front of the room. Pyramid pose, it looks like just about everybody has a block. Go ahead and grab a block. You probably only need one. I'm gonna have you stick it short or medium behind the heel of your right foot. Bring your hands behind your block. Pull in with your hands. Flexion your spine in, big old cat spine here. Cat your spine so much that it's like a spiral. Your back is almost like the, a snail's shell. Tuck your chin in more to your chest, Jalandhara Bandha. Move your hands back here and pull in. Challenge your flexiness. You might have your block on the furthest setting. As long as you can keep curling your spine in and squeezing your booty, you're good to go. You're safe. You're integrated. One more inhale. Just make your way back straight into downward facing dog. Lift your left leg up. Breathe in. Cheetah, pull your knee into your nose. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, your first crack at Ekapadabhakasana. Remember, you've got that little notch on the back of your elbow. Pull your heel into your butt. Lean forward. The lean is just like your regular lean and crow. Good. And then back to your three-legged. Breathe in. Pull it back in. Give it another try. Hardest part is keeping your elbows in toward each other. Three-legged dog, inhale. Pull your knee into the left side notch on your elbow. Hold it. Shift to your nose. Crescent lunge. Inhale, rise up. Cactus your arms, crack your heart open. Keep your legs nice and strong. Push your heart open, like that. I'm going to give you a knee. Lift up. Lift up. Lean forward, gangster lean. Float your arms any way that allows you to keep the squareness of your hips. All right, is your left hip creeping forward? Can you even it back out? Use the rotational capacity of your thigh muscles. Lift up, inhale, twist to the left, exhale. And 
just like in your chair pose, to get your twist to that depth where you can easily bind and it's not going to throw you off of your practice. You got to get right rib, left thigh connection. Beautiful cat. Which secretly means dropping your torso more onto your left thigh. On your exhale, lift up. On your inhale, spin toward the elephant wall. Fold over your legs. The second time I hit this pose, I like to do something with my arms that's intentional. So if you have a nice interlace, you're welcome to interlace. You can take reverse namaskar with your hands in prayer behind your back, or you can bind around your legs. Exhale deeper. Heel to your feet in closer if you're trying to get that full titibhasana A bind. Bend your knees until you're in a squat. Exhale. Slowly release. On your exhale, find that halfway point and engage. Inhale, lift up. And pivot to the front, set up for your pyramid pose. With your block behind your left heel, deepen the engagement of your left leg integration. And deepen your spinal flexion. Go someplace new. Forget anything else you've ever done in your pyramid pose and address this pose like it's the first time you've ever done it. When you get your hands on your block, get your hands to the back edge of your block and pull it forward. Use that pull forward to pull your head into your leg. Tuck your chin into your chest, shift your gaze up until you're looking at the hip crease on your left leg. Bend your knee as much as you need to on the left side. Beautiful, Rebecca. Collectively bring it, breathe in, breathe out, release, step it back to downward facing dog. Gaze forward, inhale. Hop yourself through and onto your back, set up for bridge or wheel. If you're taking your bridge today, take a bind around the front of your ankles. So if this first round looks like a bridge to you, try to walk your feet in all the way until they touch your butt, grab around the front of your ankles with your mitten hands, then lift up. Ready, set, go. Lift up, bridge pose. Satu Bandasana. Once you're up in your wheel, if you're in your wheel, tuck your chin into your chest. Push your chest toward the wall behind you more. Then look back where your neck is straight. Yeah, where your neck is straight. Hug your inner thighs in. Breathe in. And push your chest back toward the wall behind you more. Inhale. And come on down nice and slow. I'm going to show you one time. Kat, may I use your mat really fast? So in your wheel, I have the world, I have definitely don't have the best wheel in the world. So now everybody's going to do it. And this is how I want you to take it. You go up. This is my natural first stopping point. Tuck your chin into your chest. Push your chest back. And give me a little rock forward and backward until you start to straighten. And straighten. Straighten out, OK? Everybody has the strength to do that. Y'all got this. Ready, set, get going. Those of you who already are gifted with 
a nice open wheel, kind of like where mine was at the end, if you go there first, like that, then you can start to really stack your shoulders over your wrists, get your legs straight, and start to drop your forearms down and try to keep the integrity in the stacking of your shoulders over your wrists. Or you can lift one leg and then the other. That's a nice, fun thing to do. Or if you can keep the curve in your lumbar spine comfortable, you can start to walk your hands in toward your feet a little. Try to stay up. Whatever option you're choosing, stay up. Build stamina. Listen deeper inside. Find the newness of this pose, as if this is your first experience. Remember, let go of everything that's ever happened and give it a go. Tuck your chin into your chest when you rock. That's where you get to push your chest more forward, yeah. Peggy, that looks beautiful. All right, now come on down. Supta Baddha Konasana, plant the bottom of your feet together, let your knees fall open. Cleansing breath, breathe in, open up, sigh. Wind relieving pose, hug your knees into your chest, curl your forehead into your knees, rock up and down the length of your spine, make your way into downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up and back behind you, bend your knees, stack open, breathe in, set up for your half pigeon. I'm going to give you a few breaths here at the top to express this into any variation that makes sense, mermaid, etc. I've got a specific request for you when you go forward. So if you're taking a flip grip, king pigeon, you can go there if you're taking mermaid. And if you just want to work your back leg longer, move your hands with your fingertips around your hips and lift up out of your hips. Or you can use a block. That's a nice option as well. As you take it forward, thread your left arm underneath your chest and lay your body over your left arm. Try to have your palm turned down to the ground instead of up. This is step one of starting to set your wrists back, is setting your shoulders back after doing a lot of arm balances and big back bends. Slowly make your way back up and switch out back to down dog with your left leg up and back. Set it up. Breathe in and pull through into your pigeon on this side. Spend a few breaths exploring new sensation, new experiences in new shapes at the top of your mat. If you see something, try it. 
if you've never seen it before, or just watch. Let your body encode with your eyes. You have these tools called eyes that help you. Fold it forward. This time your right arm will be underneath your left. Rise up slowly and stick your legs out in front of you for Paschimottanasana. I recommend threading your arms underneath you. If you can get them comfortably underneath your calf muscles, that's good so that you can push your calf muscles into your forearms and again release your arm muscles and your wrist muscles. Let your heads just curl into your legs. Spinal flexion. Come on up slowly, curl onto your back, one vertebra at a time. For your shoulder stand, you can take waterfall if you prefer. If you're ready for Shavasana, you can just go straight to Shavasana, also fine. you're still upside down, give yourself about three to five more breaths and then find your Shavasana.
Imagine the first clap of thunder and how the sky heard it by letting it move through its blueness to reach the earth. Imagine the first rain and how differently the mountains heard it with their stone and the beaches heard it through their sand. Imagine how the sea listened to the rain by receiving it. Imagine the first birds driven to sing when hearing light. Imagine the first howl of the first wolf and how the moon heard that so far away. Imagine the first dream of the first weary traveler sleeping in a cave and how that cave absorbed the dream. In quantum physics, it's said that if we go inside enough, nothing is solid or separate, but fluid and unified, not particle, but wave. Go inside and listen enough and identify what we call the self. The self doesn't fall apart, but reveals the waves of life that holds everything together. We are all unified by these essential waves of spirit and nature that are the lifeblood of all things. When you go inside deep enough, we are all unified. As a class, breathe in. Wake up, make your way up to a seat and turn in toward one another. Let go of the past and make your way up to a seated position with your hands above you. One cleansing breath together to let it go. <sighs> and to unify, we ohm, breathe in. The journey toward unity lies inward. Together, when we go deep enough, we can be for one another because we are all connected. Connect to your spirit yogis. Namaste.